thoughts. Okay, thank you, Ben. I want to put myself in the position of a tax administrator, and a tax administrator who, for the purposes of this discussion, has two questions, which is how can I improve tax morale in my country, and secondly, how can research help me do that? And as I listen to the discussion so far, I'm afraid as the tax administrator, I'm feeling a little frustrated. Because I will say, OK, supposing we can prove that it's actually true in my country, for example, that um, women who are highly educated and religious are actually more, um, have higher tax morale or more tax compliant than other people. What can I do with that information? Well, if it's a very strong relationship, it helps me a little bit with my auditing, because I can say, well, I need to audit less the tax returns from highly educated religious females. But in fact, most of these correlations when we do this are not that strong, and I doubt that in practice this would help me with auditing. I'm not clear what else it helps me with, because I can't do anything about uh, the extent to which the population of my country is either religious or educated or female, um, and certainly not as a tax administrator, not for quite a few decades. So I think correlates of what you call tax morale might be very interesting for academics, um, and we've done lots of research on them, but I'm not sure, as a tax administrator, I find them terribly helpful at all. So that's my first question, or first point. My second point is, if we go to the information that's relevant to tax administrators, I'm not convinced that tax morale, defined as the willingness to pay taxes, is quite enough. And the reason is that if we're talking about willingness to pay taxes, we're talking about something in people's heads, a mentality. That's not what a tax administrator is interested in. A tax administrator is interested in behavior, in knowing whether people are tax compliant, not what they think about paying their taxes, and but what they actually do. Now, clearly there is a relationship between these two, but how close that relationship is, is something that in general we don't know about human beings. We don't know in general how close the, our apparent attitudes are to our actual behavior in that sphere. So as a tax administrator, um, I want to know about compliance. And um, I'm kind of, I don't get the sense that answers to, the, to questions about, you know, do you think it's wrong or ever wrong for people to pay taxes? Well, it's kind of interesting, but I don't think it tells me actually what I want to know. So I think we have a problem here, that we have been researching tax morale for a very long time, and we've got lots and lots of studies. And frankly, I don't think that, a very, that many of them are really practically very helpful. I think as a tax administrator, what I want to know is not what in general affects tax morale or is correlated with tax morale, even in my country. I want to know what I can do to improve tax morale. Now, we can do research on this. Um, quite a lot of research is being done and an increasing amount is being done. But it takes a very different form from looking at data and looking at correlations. It has to be action research that effectively involves an intervention and a study of the effect of that intervention. And since you were talking about just now about uh, taxpayer education, uh, I'll just run very quickly through an example of uh, a study that was done recently about the effectiveness of taxpayer education in Rwanda by the Rwanda Revenue Authority. The Rwanda Revenue Authority basically provides taxpayer education for newly registered businesses. That's businesses that have been regist registered for a couple of years and are actually in business rather than formally registered. And recently, over 2007, 2008, they arranged to interview uh, nearly a thousand newly registered businesses and asked them a lot of questions about their knowledge about tax and their attitudes to tax. 
And those same interviewees were then invited to uh, receive their taxpayer education in various parts of the country. And close to half of uh, the people who'd been interviewed did in fact go to a taxpayer education day. After they'd been to the taxpayer education day, they were then re-interviewed. And it was possible to compare those who had been to taxpayer education with those who hadn't been. And they found that the taxpayers who had been to the taxpayer education day had, after the education, more knowledge of the tax system than before and a more positive attitude to paying taxes. Attitude. Well, sounds good, but, you know, not, not surprising. Um, they'd been listening to probably very charming uh, tax, co tax collectors educating them, and they probably felt rather more sympathetic to the tax authority. Um, their attitudes had, Im had improved, but had they actually paid more taxes? Um, well, and here is uh, where the well-targeted research becomes very interesting. Because in this case, the Rwanda Revenue Authority, like any other revenue authority, has internal information on how much tax of, from two or three types was paid by these interviewees in the previous year and how much they were actually paying after they'd received their taxpayer education. So comparing those who were educated with, uh, at the training and those who were not educated and looking at their averages, you can see, well, did actually receiving the education make any difference to their actual taxpaying behavior? And it was found that, in fact, uh, yes, it increased the frequency with which they actually made a tax declaration rather than failing to make it. It reduced the frequency with which they put in a taxpayer a declaration that said no income, no profits, what we call nil filers. And it, even more strikingly, did actually increase the total amount of income that was declared. So very positive. Um, taxpayer education works. What the Rwanda Revenue Authority or anyone else can now do is actually do something a little bit more sophisticated. They could experiment with two or three different types of taxpayer education and similarly see whether they can um, Im improve the quality of the taxpayer education by comparing different types of education. So I think I'm, I'm going to stop there, but my point is that just to reiterate again, I mean, two fundamental points. I'm not clear that from the point of view of the, the tax administrator that knowing the correlates of uh, attitudes to paying tax is actually very helpful. And secondly, that as a ta tax administrator, I'm not terribly interested in attitudes as expressed in interviews. You know, I want to see the bacon on the table and I want to know whether people are actually paying tax or not. Thank you. Thank you, Mick. Uh,